St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. It is with genuine joy that we welcome back our celebrant today, Jesuit Father Michael Coots. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Amen. Welcome to the celebration of this Eucharist, the televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from a parishioner from St. Patrick's Church in Mississauga, Ontario. She offers it in thanksgiving for the blessings received and for a special intention. We know that this televised Mass brings joy and peace not only to people here in Canada but all across the world. And on their behalf, I thank you in Mississauga, Ontario. Today now, to celebrate this Eucharist more worthily, let us call to mind the fact that we have a God who cares for us, a God who does not mark our sins but is ready to forgive us. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep us, we humbly beseech you, or from all that might harm us and grant all that works for our good. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the former alliance, every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices, that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us, for after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Lord, you, Jesus began to teach beside the sea. Such a large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat on the water and sat there while the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. He began to teach them many things in parables, and in his teaching he said to them, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil, and sprang up quickly, since it did not, it did, it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. Other seed fell on good soil and brought forth grain, growing up and increasing, and yielding sixty and thirty and a hundredfold. And he said, Let anyone with ears to hear listen. When Jesus was alone, those who were around him along with the twelve asked him about the parable, and he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God, but for those outside everything comes in parables, in order that they may indeed look but not perceive, that they may indeed listen but not understand, so that they may not turn again and be forgiven." And Jesus said to them, Do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. These are the ones on the path where the word is sown. When they hear it, Satan immediately comes <coughs> and takes away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. When they hear the word, they immediately receive it with joy, but they have no root and endure only for a while. And then, when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And there are others, are, sown, are those sown among thorns. These are the ones who hear the word of God, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth and the desire for other things come in and choke the word, and it yields nothing. And these are the ones sown on good soil. They hear the word of God and accept it and bear fruit, thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. The Gospel of the Lord. When we hear a homily at Mass, it's usually about the first reading of the Gospel. Today I'd like to reflect on the beautiful responsorial psalm, the psalm and the response that you sang. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever. Is there any other type of priest? Priesthood is for life, just like marriage is a pledge to one another until death do us part. But there was, in the Old Testament, two lines of priesthood, both blessed by God, but both different. One was the one that Mary Takas read for us in that first reading, a priest that was called only to offer sacrifices. He was a priest appointed by men from the tribe of Levi. Aaron was the very first one, and we know how he was made priest. Oil was poured on his head and went down his beard. It was the oil of salvation, the oil of anointing. Now, these priests were called by lot. They were called to do things, and they were very much like, but not exactly like our permanent deacons today. They would offer sacrifice and then go back to their families and go back to their work. Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, was one of them. When his group came to serve and to offer sacrifice, he was chosen by lot, and he offered sacrifice and then went back to his work. They could have been rabbis, they could have been fishermen, farmers, carpenters, but they were only called for one purpose, 
namely to offer sacrifice first for themselves and then for the sins of the people. But when the high priest Jesus came along, he abrogated all that because he made one perfect sacrifice. And then there was the priest according to the order of Melchizedek in the line of Melchizedek. And that is where you and I come in. When we were baptized, we remember, well, we were babies at that time, water was poured on our forehead, and the whole thing was you were baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You had photographs taken, then you went off to the Mandarin for a good party. We didn't realize that soon after the baptism, there are three or four small rituals, and the very first one is the anointing with chrism. The priest or the deacon anoints you on your head with the oil of salvation, with the chrism, the same one that is used for priests and for bishops, perhaps even for the Pope. I did not make any research on that. But this anoints you as priest, prophet, and king. And that was what Melchizedek was. Melchizedek, as we heard last Wednesday, also from the letter to the Hebrews, was a priest that Abraham came to after he had his great victories over so many kings. And he decided that Melchizedek would offer a sacrifice, a sacrifice of thanksgiving. And at the end of it, Abraham gave one-tenth of all he possessed. Was that the basis of our baptismal stipends today? I really don't know. But can you imagine if every one of us who was baptized gave one-tenth of what we had? Just let's take the past prime ministers of our country, Brian Mulroney and Jean Chrétien, Pierre Trudeau, Paul Martin. If they only gave one-tenth of what they had, I don't think we would need second collections or we would have to ask for money for our Lenten mission for the National Catholic Broadcast Council. Do you think so? But that is not only them, it's all of us. But Melchizedek was also a prophet. Whenever we think of prophets, we think of somebody who can tell the future. But that is not what a prophet was all about. If we look at the prophets like Amos and Isaiah and Ezekiel and, Zachar and Zechariah, we realize that they were people that encouraged the people of God. They read the signs of the time. They realized that there were certain kings that were corrupt. There were certain kings that were oppressive. And it was within this structure that they decided that people would serve the Lord. It was within this structure that they would give them hope and courage and tell them in which direction to go. And that's what you and I do. I see this happening all over the place. I go into pharmacies, into banks, into supermarkets, and you encourage one another to follow the Lord. You encourage one another by a word of comfort and joy, a hand round a shoulder, a shaking of a hand, a touch by a holy person is a blessing, and that's what a prophet does. He blesses you in the name of the Lord. She blesses you in the name of the Lord. But Melchizedek was also a king. We are told he was called the king of righteousness, and he was also the king of Salem, or Jerusalem, as you and I know it. And Salem means peace. He was a king of righteousness. He was a king of peace. And that's what we want, justice and peace in this world. But as the late Holy Father John Paul II said way back in 2003, if you want peace, you first have to have justice. And if you want justice, you have to have a forgiving heart. Now that is very hard. How do I forgive people when a relative of mine is killed or when a just injustice is done to me or when I'm slandered? I really want to take revenge. I want justice and I really don't want to forgive. And the Lord says, that's not going to be the case. And if we are priests in the line of Melchizedek, if we are prophets in the line of Melchizedek, if we are kings of royal blood in the line of Melchizedek, then that is what we are called to. That is what we were baptized into. And that is what the Lord blesses us with. May God bless you all as you continue to work in the kingdom of God. 
Join me now as we pray together. We pray for the church as a minister, as a sign, and in its ministry of peace and justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, We pray for our civil leaders as they voice the sound of the voiceless, the downtrodden, and those on the fringes of our society. We pray to the Lord. For the intentions of our donor, this Mass, our parishioner from St. Patrick's in Mississauga, and for all those who are, have asked us for prayers, for those suffering from Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and those who take care of them, for those who have cancer and other crippling diseases, we pray to the Lord. For peace in the world, especially in the Middle East and Afghanistan, in Egypt and Syria and other troubled spots, we pray to the Lord. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the gifts that you have given us, and especially the gift of baptism, where we were anointed priest, prophet, and king, in the name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread that we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, For through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. My sisters, my brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offering to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we sing. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of your Son, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Benedict, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Basil, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <coughs> through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You Let us share with one another a sign of this peace and friendship.
behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us and all our dear ones unto life everlasting. Let us pray. Governed by your Spirit, we pray, O Lord, those you feed with the body and blood of your Son, that professing you not just in word or in speech, but also in work and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been celebrated. Go in peace. Our thanks to a parishioner of St. Patrick's Church in Mississauga, Ontario, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. We'd like to make it as easy as possible for you to send us a donation, so if you'd like us to send you prepaid postage envelopes, just call our office at 1-888-383-6277.